Hello everybody and welcome back to Skip Allen Paints and the YouTube channel of Skip Allen. Okay, so this is the third video in a series of videos about the newest Wacom driver that was released on 7-14-2015, July the 14th, 2015. I did a video yesterday about the problems that I had when I was installing it. Uh, earlier today, the second video, I um, talked about... Uh, the stuff that would fix everything that happened and why it happened and so forth. And actually, to be honest, I'm really pretty excited about the driver now. And there's some really wonderful stuff in it. I mentioned that I called my buddy over in England, Tim Shelbourne, and we got together and I uh, had a go-to meeting and we had a good time playing with the uh, Wacom tablet uh, properties and finding out what all these things did. Now, this particular video is going to be about creating custom palettes in, uh, with the Wacom driver, and it's really quite interesting. But before we get to it, we, we've got to explain a few things, um, a, a few basic things. So I'm going to open up my uh, tablet properties, and I'm now in functions, and I've clicked on on-screen controls. Now, on-screen controls is the new name for what was called the radial menu. Okay, so they're now called on-screen controls. If when I tried to do this yesterday, um, these, I, I couldn't see these uh, names. All I would see would be A, P, B, O, R, P, H, and whatever. And so, uh, you know, I couldn't tell what this was all about, to be honest. And the reason that happened is it's actually a bit of a bug in um, this in, in Wacom's uh, software. In Painter, as, and I'm pretty sure you can do it in um, a Mac as well, you can select medium font or larger font. And what that does is it makes the fonts a little bit larger on these high-resolution screens and makes it easier for us old folks to read. So I had mine set at medium, 125, and I'm assuming that if it was set at larger, it would have been worse. And so with the size of the lettering a little bit bigger, they wouldn't fit in the space uh, allowed. And so consequently, these were all truncated. So that's why I only saw AP, BR, and so forth. Now that I've changed my fonts to one, to small or to 100%, uh, I can see them. Now, I will tell you that after this demo, I will go back and go back to the larger fonts because it's easier for me to use. And once I know what this is about, it'll be better. Now, uh, another thing that we want to look at, um, these first uh, few panels. I was trying to remember what they call them. It's written right there. These first few panels look like they're defaults for Photoshop. I brought in my panels um, and my preferences from my uh, previous driver. Now, what I mean by that is, you know, I came in and I used, not that, I used my Wacom Desktop Center. And you can back up and restore your settings to your computer or to the Wacom uh, cloud. And, and so what I did is I went through this Wacom uh, desktop and I restored my preferences. I would have expected these defaults to go away because they were not in my preferences, but they didn't. I haven't been able to find a way to access them though. When I open up the radial menu, I see the radial menus that I've put in, not the ones that uh, are the defaults, which is fine with me. I'm not utilizing these. Okay, so let's look down here. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Down here, we've got a series of um, icons, and the first one adds a new panel. The next one edits a selected panel, so I could edit app shortcuts. The next one duplicates a selected panel, and the last one de deletes a selected pa uh, panel. If we look on this side, 
we've got a window similar to what we had before, which ha we select keystroke if we're going to add a keystroke. We can select um, functions that are already set up uh, for us. Um, so just like you could before, you could uh, program, whoops, you could program these um, key assignments. Okay. Now, what is different is if we click on brush tools and we go to keystrokes and we look at the keystroke, this is for brush size and it's brush, brush size positive. So this is the bracket key that you use in Photoshop and or Painter to make your brush size larger. Now, normally this would have had to be on the, um, oh, what do you call it? <laughs> Normally, it would have had to been on the touch ring so that you could run your finger around the ring to make it get bigger. But what is happening here is it's repeating the stroke. So when you activate it, the stroke will get repeated and uh, the, the, your brush size will increase. We didn't have that before. And that's going to make a lot of functions that we couldn't use because you'd have to keep tapping it. Uh, but anyway, functions that we couldn't use, it should make them uh, usable for us. And I think that's really good. Okay, so what about all these radial menu things? Those were not what my menus were called. Um, like, for instance, radial menu zero would have been the base uh, me menu. Let me open this up right here. So if I click there, I'm opening up the radial menu. And so the base radial menu dash zero is what this one is. And I don't think there was a name for it. I think it was just um, our radial menu. Um, now, when you look at this, you've got a couple of extra things here. You've got a pen tool and you've got um, a settings tool where you can open up the Wacom tablet properties and you can X out here or you can X out here. Now we know radial menu zero is this radial menu because we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven radial menus. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and we have advanced brush controls. So that's the first one of my radial menus. Now I don't like this name as I mentioned before, so all I need to do is come down here and click that. Now with this open, I can come up here and say, my menu or whatever I want to name it to and click OK. And now you can see that it is now called my menu. OK, so I can go in and change the names of all of these to something that is familiar. I wish the names had been brought over, but they weren't. <laughs> so we have to go in and change those uh, ourselves. Now, as you go down the list, you have radial menu one, which is this one, radial menu two, which is that one, and radial menu three, which is this one. And then you have some extras under there. And all that means is that these are, you know, in the in the previous version, you had a tree here that would tell you how these are stacked up. But here it's by numbers. And you know that this is the parent this is a child, this is a child, this is a grandchild, so to speak, and this would be a child. So um, I would rename all of these, but let's go into radial menu three, and then we're going to go into radial menu three, two, and then we're going to go to this last one, which is radial menu three, two, one, one. And I would probably uh, change this one to layer mask you know, the name, because uh, this is all having to do with layer mask. Okay. But there's something else we can do. Uh, let's, let's go to this particular menu. And I tell you, we'll go ahead and change the name to layer mask. So L-A-Y-E-R mask. And, but notice that after that, I have these icons here. And we've got, um, we, we've got single column, we've got double column, we have double row and single row. And if I select 
double column, it's going to change these into a custom palette. So watch. If I click OK, and it didn't do it. <laughs> Why not? Let's see. We've got layer mask. Click in here. Double column. Maybe it's the one back from that is the one that I did. Let's say OK. Take it off. Maybe that's what I have to do is have to close it first. Sorry about this. Every time I do something, there's always something different about it. We'll go to Radio Menu 3, Radio Menu 3, 2, and we will go. Hey, look, see, it hadn't changed. There. Ah, good. It did change. All right. So now here's the layer mask um, palette. This is what it changed to instead of using the radial dial. And this is pretty cool. This is very much like palettes uh, that we can create in Painter. Now, they're too large, in my opinion. Um, although, remember that, uh, let's minimize this and we'll open up a, our layers palette here. And we're on this watercolor layer. And if I click on Create Layer Mask, you see it creates layer mask and the uh, palette disappeared. Okay, so let's bring this up. We'll go back to layer mask. We'll right click here and we have the option of making it smaller. Now, I don't know how much smaller this is. This will make it, but it is smaller. So I'm going to say, okay. And then I click on this. And we go to layer menu three, three, one, and there you go. We've got a much smaller mask, uh, smaller uh, custom palette, and this is workable. This, this could be used if it were pinned to the board and didn't go away. And you can do that. For instance, here's your little pin. If you click pin there, now when I activate the command create layer mask, and let's We'll go up here to this layer and I click on create layer mask. It creates it, but this stays here. So this is the same thing as if I had my painter uh, custom palettes. Let's see, I have some open there out here. All right, so if I grab one of these custom palettes and bring it down, See, I have my own set of custom palettes, and they're a little more versatile than this one is, but it essentially is the same thing. Now, you can't do layer, uh, you can't do custom palettes in Photoshop, but you could, with the Wacom tablet, set up palettes that you could quickly jump to. And, um, I, you know, anything, you, any commands that you can make in the radial menu or now the on-screen commands, you could put into a palette and use in Painter or Photoshop. Now, I probably would not pin them. I would probably have them uh, just open up whenever I call them and then uh, have them disappear after I make the... Uh, object that I want to make. Let's see, that would be fun because that that keeps my space open. One other thing about that, I'm not sure if I showed you this or not, but this pins it and this opens up your Wacom tablet preferences. When you click that, the Wacom tablet preferences open. And then you can close the menu here or there. Okay, that's all I know about this um, new Wacom tablet driver. I probably will find out some more things as I begin to work with it. But for right now, I'm really impressed with some of this stuff. And I think it is going to be very useful, especially creating uh, palettes instead of the radial uh, menu. The palettes just seem to work better and look better than the radial menu did. Alrighty, hope you enjoyed it. And I'll talk, you talk to you next time. Bye-bye.